And before uh, we go anywhere, before we start the video, I want to thank all of my patrons for their support, my Lords of Fantasy, and here, the Corner Crew here on your YouTube, all of my subscribers, uh, you are our Corner Crew, and so thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, and also, uh, for anyone who has supported us on War Games Vault with my little publication, uh, Scratch Builder Monthly, which will be uh, expanding uh, pretty soon to other kinds of publications. So thank you very much to everyone. Uh, it really helps the studio out. Welcome to MJ Hobby Corner Studio. Uh, I am MJ, and for today, I have an interesting project. I've been working on upgrading all of my terrain, uh, and we're going to be doing a lot of different projects throughout the summer. And one of the things I want to upgrade are my game mats. So I'm going to show you a way that I make quick and low-budget game mats uh, for my game using towels. So let's check out the crafter's bench and see what this is all about. Okay, so as we can see from the previous steps, uh, the mat is now uh, colored, stained with the food coloring and the green paint. And all the roads are textured with the texture paste. Uh, it's looking pretty good. And then uh, what I do is I decorate the edges of the road. I add a little bit of hot glue to the edges. And uh, you'll see this uh, in the video a little bit later as well. I use homemade flock. Okay, so this is the stage where I'm decorating the roads. And I'm just doing the sides of the roads. I have a little bit of uh, hot glue that I added to the side of the road. And that acts as a little anchor point. And so now all I do is I take my homemade flock, which I have to make some more. And... Sprinkle it along the sides. Okay, and then later I just put it over a newspaper and get all the excess out. And then, in addition to that, I take some rope filament. Okay, from these from this twine and kind of tease it out. <clears throat> take a couple of ends, tease them out, and then I cut these to size. So not too big. Uh, not too big okay and I have these little filaments that are going to represent grass clumps on the side of the road and so I just stick them right into the white glue okay and then any excess I will cut later but I'll just keep doing that for a while and that's how I begin to decorate the board and you can see some dark areas so that the green is not uniform. Uh, it's pretty cool. I really like this technique. Okay, so now I'm going to let everything dry. I mean, you can see the texturing with the glue and cornstarch and paint. You can use flour too. I mean, flour works just as well. I like cornstarch because it really thickens things. Uh, it's an old paper mache, you know, material that I would use. But, um, yeah, so it gives you really nice texturing when you uh, really soak that stuff. No water, just the, the, the plain old glue. And uh, works very well. It makes a very hard covering on it. And then notice the difference in elevation which i think is pretty cool it actually uh turns it into a hole which is what i wanted uh, and so now i'm going to decorate 
the sides with some vegetation. Not a lot, just a few things. Okay, uh, I just want to have a few things glued to the mat because when you fold it, the more stuff you have, obviously, the more uh, chances things will come off. But it's really not that bad. I mean, um, I'm going to show more complex uh, mat builds like this and then, uh, you know, it, it should be cool once it's done. I have to work on this next. So I'm going to do the same thing I did he here with this. Make a little bit more mixture. And then we're going to paint the edges of the mat with like a black or something. And here I'm going to do something different. I don't know. This looks like a nice road here. Um, so that's going to be pretty cool. And then I'll show you how I set up these mats once they're done. This still has to do a lot of drying. All right, and then I apply a healthy amount to the towel where I want the road. Um, I could always give this, uh, I could have given this a little bit of a darker kind of uh, paint. Um, I didn't want this road to match necessarily the other darker roads. So I, I made this one a little bit different. Uh, but of course, as a crafter, as a builder, you're in charge of how you want things to look. That's very subjective. So you decide how you want it to look if you try this kind of stuff. That's up to you. All right. This is uh, my, uh, just something I am experimenting with. And I like the way it is. But people are free to change and use the technique whichever way they want so i may try this on other cloth types and see what i can come up with i mean and that's what i do just experiment whatever works works well and whatever doesn't work doesn't work all right i'm gonna finish this up so to make water on these mats i'm using a, a very old technique that i've used um this is the kind of technique for water that's it, it doesn't produce very like ultra realistic results you'll need other you'll need resins and other things if you really want something that's much more realistic however there's a lot you can do with this kind of technique that I'm about to show and you can actually add water ponds streams lakes whatever you want to these kinds of mats. So right now what I did is I took some aquamarine from, uh, this is from Apple Barrel, and I only use Apple Barrel paints for this kind of stuff. Aquamarine, now I'm using a little bit of dark umber for the banks. And remember, this paste with uh, the kitty litter stuff is uh, glue. This is all adhesive. Okay, so I'll show you the next step. Also, uh, just notice I added a few more stonework bits. We're going to develop those in just a minute. And here I add my grass filament after I give it a little bit of a darker coat. I, ask my, I add my grass filament right to the glue there before it dries. Okay, because I mean that's all glue. So... Might as well take advantage of it. All right, let's finish up with this uh, little stream on this side. I add this plastic to the stream area. And this I buy at the dollar store for a dollar. It's a huge sheet. Uh, you can see some of it on the floor there. And uh, this is a smoky, you can get them uh, clearer than this, but this one's a smoky one. And uh, basically, I use it when I want to make big ocean boards. I don't deal with resin or anything like that. Not that I don't have a, not that I have a phobia of resins. I just prefer not to deal with it. All right, so I'm going to trim this a little bit to fit the middle section, and then we'll start to lay it down. Now, I cut this by eye. Okay, and there we go. I'm going to work with that a little bit. Okay. 
make a little bit since this is a fast flowing this works well for fast flowing water um, I always like motion in my water uh, if you want like a dead pond then I use uh, the cheapest resin I use from Walmart it's that Loctite resin and that works well okay and this is what I do try not to get paint over it um, just let the paint down below show and then what I do is a little wash of some kind of ink and that's it all right so I'm gonna finish this up and kind of open up some of the little folds that might look too much like plastic and just kind of squeeze out some air um, and this will stick like there's no tomorrow okay then what I do on the banks here like here a little bit of straight edge we don't want that so what I do is I go over it with a little bit more paste in the bank area and that secures the plastic and again it's not coming off you gotta like literally rip it off and that's all I do it's a little wide over here we'll just put a little bit more of that paste to re redefine our banks okay and then the final part is I take Mod Podge the very uh make sure that it's the real glossy one and I give it a good good brush of Mod Podge or varnish uh, as long as it's nice and glossy works really well and so to the aquamarine I added uh right over the plastic some glossy turquoise and then in the center i add a darker blue a two blue is the color and kind of just swirl my brush give it swirls and Okay, to make a little bit of stone detail uh, in some areas of the mat, uh, what I do uh, is I use chunks of this stuff. Uh, this is that pillow insulation. Uh, you can buy this stuff, but it's expensive. I wouldn't buy it just for this. This was a pillow that got really grungy, and so I cut off the grungy areas and... Uh, turn them into chunks and I'm making rock work out of this and uh, one of the benefits to using this soft stuff is that when you fold your mat it no matter what you add to this stuff it's going to remain somewhat soft and very carefully with some of the stuff that's around I kind of surround it a little bit um, and then I wait for this to dry here's a very small piece we're going to embed that in there and I wait for this to dry and then what I do is I go over it with a little bit of the glue and flour, no kitty litter, just regular glue and flour and coat it so that um, it gives me a little bit, it takes away a little bit of that spongy look. So here is a piece that I've just prepared and he, the foam has been covered with the glue and flour mix, a little bit of gray paint. And I'm just letting it dry. It'll become nice and, and strong. And basically that's the same thing I do with these things. Once it dries and it adds to the board. Uh, here's a bigger piece. Which I have to. Uh, I'm going to be upgrading a little bit. Do a little bit of dry brush and whatnot. And these are hard now because of the paste. And they make excellent rock work. I, in my opinion. You know. So. I'm going to put that there. All right, why don't we set up the board a little bit, and I'll show you uh, some of the terrain and how the board may look. Uh, one of the many ways in which we can set up this board.
Okay, so the water effect is almost done. I just uh, put my first uh, coat on it uh, of Mod Podge. And so just waiting for it to dry. And then I'll put a second coat. Uh, not too bad. Okay, not too bad. And then here's the rest of the mat. Uh, everything else is pretty much done. Uh, here's the other muddy road. And I'm going to add maybe a little bit of black to the edges there. Uh, but that's it, you know, and uh, everything's looking good so far. I think what I'm going to do uh, for water effects uh, like this that are simple and um, just very low budget, non-resin, uh, I'll just talk about it in another video uh, because I found that I have a lot to say about it and I do have a few different techniques that I use. This one is, is an experimental one that I'm playing with now that involves with layers of different plastic and stuff uh, but eventually I want to um, show a few more little techniques more on this kind of stuff in the future it doesn't only have to be woodland folks we can do deserts we can do arctic mats we can do a wide variety of different things all right and that's what I'm here for to experiment and see if it works all right talk to you soon